Welcome into NFL's Every Game on the Board Betting Podcast Friday show with our first guest up, Robbie Vino. Rob, welcome in. How are you? I am good today, Drew. Happy Friday to you. Another huge weekend in front of us. Absolutely, Robbie. And we got top of the card here, 451452 Sunday action. Arizona Cardinals at the New York Giants. Looks like 50 and a half being the total with the New York football Giants laying three points at MetLife, Robbie. Yeah, I think the first thing right out of the gate, Drew, is the fact that you're going to have two very important pieces come back for these squads. In the Giants case, Saquon Barkley, which every fantasy player is happy about, I'm sure. And uh, on the Arizona side, Patrick Peterson, number one cornerback for the Cardinals, says served his suspension. He'll be back in play. The Arizona defense has been pretty horrid all season long. So uh, Patrick Peterson can only help in his first game back. Arizona right now, Drew, I don't know how you feel about them, but offensively they seem like they're getting in sync with this Lincoln-Riley offense. Kyler Murray looks a little better. Not sure if it's a product of the last two opponents they've played, Atlanta and Cincinnati, two of the worst defenses in the NFL. But that being said, it's two straight-up wins. It's two-point spread covers. It's 60 points in two games, an average of 30 per game. So for the Cardinals, things are looking pretty good. We'll hear an awful lot. We always hear an awful lot, right, about the West Coast team coming east Mm -hmm. to play the 1 o'clock start. Right. How about it's Arizona's third time doing this in seven weeks. They came east to play Baltimore. They lost 23-17 as a 13-point dog, but they covered. They came east to play Cincinnati. They were a three-point dog. They won straight up, 26-23. So they're already 2-0 doing this. They haven't had a bye week yet, so it's three times west to east. One o'clock start within their first seven games. I, you know, the schedule maker wasn't kind to them, but they seem to be immune to it. Like I say, two and zero against the spread already. So I don't know that that comes into play here. The Giants are off of back to back games that are kind of opposite of what Arizona's off of. We talked about the weak uh, defenses they played. The Giants have had to face New England and Minnesota in back to back weeks. Thus, you wind up with thirty five fourteen and twenty eight to ten losses. I think that they'll be very happy to see the step down in class defensively presented to them by the Arizona Cardinals. Keys here, Drew, and I think this is going to be a high-scoring game, but the keys have to be Arizona right now, number one in the NFL in tempo when you talk about plays per second. How much time does it take Arizona to run a play? They're number one in the NFL. They run a play every 24 seconds. Giants are number eight. Surprisingly enough, they run a play every 26 seconds. So you got two high tempo teams facing off against two bad defenses, two mobile quarterbacks. Um, You know, they're middle of the road where their sacks are concerned. So I don't think Murray or uh, Daniel Jones will be under much pressure here. I think what you wind up with is probably a high scoring game. And I would not be surprised, Drew, whatsoever if Arizona walked in here and won the game straight up. So for those that are daring, in that way, where they have three point underdogs and like to go money line, um, you know, to me, Arizona's worth that shot. And that's a fascinating stat here, Robbie. I'm actually taking notes in terms of so this is the Cardinals' third time playing in the Eastern time zone, and they're already 2 0 ATS, correct? Yeah, one in Baltimore and one in Cincinnati. Yep. Great stats there, man. We got uh, next game up, 4-5-3, Houston at Indianapolis. Key division battle here and a competitive spread. Indianapolis laying one now. There are pick out there, so important one to shop around, guys. Get the best of the number. 47 the total, Robbie. Yeah, we're seeing some take back on this game as we speak, Drew. I think right before we came on here, on Friday afternoon, uh, there was a little push back toward the Houston Texans. I happen to like the Colts side here. I think that the bye week did wonders for the Indianapolis Colts. Boy, health-wise, and they needed some guys back because they have been decimated by injury up until this point. When you just talk about the guys that they lost, when you're you know, speaking about key personnel, Darius Leonard fits the bill of key personnel, T.Y. Hilton, Marlon Mack, the only guy that won't be back to 100% health here or close to that um, is going to be Malik Hooker, the safety, who's still going to remain out for the Indianapolis Colts. But boy, oh boy, having T.Y. Hilton back is huge. Having Marlon Mack running healthy is huge. And obviously having Darius Leonard in the middle of tackling machine is huge for them. I think another big matchup in this game is that Indianapolis offensive line, which I find to be nationally 
very underrated. I mean, Quentin Nelson and company are beasts up front. And Houston, if they have one strength, there's not many of them on the defensive side, but if they have a strength, it would be their defensive front and their ability to pass rush. But to me, Indianapolis can negate that. They're so balanced offensively, able to open holes for Mack, able to protect Jacoby Brissett, now with weapons back. that They should be able to move the ball offensively here. The Houston secondary has been a mess all season long. So I think that Indy is in good shape on the offensive side. And for Houston, it's going to be a little bit different of a challenge here. We love Deshaun Watson, obviously. It probably, along with Russell Wilson and Patrick Mahomes, they are the kings of making something out of broken plays. But they've played two real weak defenses the last couple of games, Atlanta and Kansas City, barring what we saw last night out of KC. They look pretty good. Um, but up until that point, they had looked horrible. Texans played some soft defenses, scored a lot of points. Indy not that soft on the defensive side. 3-0 and on the road against the spread are the Texans so far this year. So you have that to counter any Indianapolis argument. However, I think that when you take a look down there, common opponents, Atlanta, KC, and the Chargers, both of these teams have played all three of those. And they both covered all three games against those teams. So that's a little bit even as well. Fundamentally is what it comes down to for me. And I think the health in the bye week for Indianapolis is enough to get me to the Colts. Robbie, we got AFC East and, oh, my lowly Miami Dolphins catching 17 on the road against the Buffalo Bills. 41 the total in this one, Robbie. You want to recommend them? Um, if you made me bet aside, yeah, with Fitzpatrick at, at the helm, I, I, I would I would take the Dolphins uh, to stay within the number here. Now, granted, that's coming from a Dolphins fan, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would, but I'm not going to bet it now, Robbie. Well, you know, when you and I did college the other day, uh, one of our games, I think, involved the Cal Golden Bears, and I made the reference that the Cal Golden Bears are the Pac-12's uh, version of San Diego State out of the Mountain West. Great defense. But you can't trust them to lay big numbers because they just don't score enough. And maybe the Buffalo Bills are the AFC East version of the same thing, right? They haven't scored over 28 points all season. So to lay 17 is asking quite a bit in a divisional game. Um, When you look at what Buffalo's played so far, I mean, they played Cincinnati, the number 31 ranked defense out of 32 in the NFL. They only scored 21. They played the Giants, ranked 28th in defense. In the NFL, scored 28 points. That was their high. Played the Jets, ranked 19th in the NFL in total defense, scored 17. So, you know, Miami's defense might be bad, but can we expect Buffalo to get better than 28? I don't think so. Uh, They do come off a bye. You never know what's been worked on during the bye week. Maybe Josh Allen, you know, got together with the OC and they found some stuff they can work on. But I don't know that I could trust it here. Uh, And Brian Flores, the new head coach for Miami, obviously has coached inside the AFC East forever. I think he started with New England back in 2004. So he knows Bill Belichick's game plans for the Buffalo Bills as recently as last year. Um, Certainly he'll put forth something game plan wise. Let's see if the players can execute it. It's a divisional game. Buffalo's already got one loss inside this division, so they can't afford another one. They're not going to lose the game, but covering 17 is another question the way they play offense. Um, Something I'll probably lay off of, Drew, but I could not. It's why I asked you, would you recommend them? I couldn't argue with anybody that would recommend the Miami Dolphins here. Good stuff, Robbie. We got Minnesota at Detroit up next. Looks like the Vikings now minus two and a half on the road. Forty three and a half. The total here, Robbie, and what Detroit short week after the Monday nighter. Man, that was a tough one to take if you were a Detroit, Detroit Lions fan on the Monday nighter. Played a great game in Lambeau against the 5-1 and one Packers. Now having to come back at it at home against the Minnesota Vikings. Tough team here with Kirk Cousins, but uh, how are you feeling about Minnesota-Detroit? Yeah, and I think it all starts and ends here, Drew, with the fact that we have another divisional matchup here. And for the Minnesota Vikings, it's desperation. They're 0-2 inside the NFC North already. So to go 0-3 would probably negate any chance of winning a tiebreaker should they tie with any of these teams, whether it be Chicago or Green Bay or whoever at the end of the year. They need this game. 0-2 is a a tough state. They've lost to Chicago. They've lost to Green Bay. Detroit's 0-1 in the division. I'll tell you what, if it weren't for the Minnesota desperation in this game, I might even side with the Lions because I think they're a lot better than people think. They played a great game Monday night. They were probably the better team Monday night than were the Green Bay Packers. 
it looks as if they might get some help in their defensive line rotation. If they can get Deshaun Hand and Mike Daniels back, that gives them six guys to run in and out of there. That will bode well for their defense. Um, to me, without going much farther than that, I think this game shapes up as an under. And Minnesota is number five in the NFL in total defense. They're going to play hard, as I mentioned. It's a huge game for them. And the Lions have already faced, how about this list of quarterbacks? They faced Aaron Rodgers. They faced Patrick Mahomes. They faced Carson Wentz, Phillip Rivers, and Kyler Murray. It's a pretty good batch of quarterbacks that this defense has faced already. Kirk Cousins probably ranked sixth out of those six that I mentioned. Um, so I, I think that, you know, 43 and a half to me, I could see people scraping by with a 23 to 20 final and a ticket on the under 43 and a half hook might be real important here, but I think under's the way to go. Yeah, important important to uh, get the best of the number, and you're right, the hook is important, and a lot of NFL betting, and he's Robbie Vino, follow him on Twitter, at Rob Vino Sports, couple games left here on this segment, that we'll get Minty Bets in the house, and uh, Robbie, we were just talking about off camera, uh, how long have you been, been with Sports Memo doing this podcast, Robbie? Uh, since 1998, so that's 21 years. Wow, 21 it, years here. It originated, yeah, it originated as a radio show, the Las Vegas Sports Line, a morning sports radio show. Okay, and through technology, we've kind of transformed it here into a right. podcast, and now in video, actually, uh, just the second mm-hmm. week doing that. So, uh, man, that's uh, good stuff, good history there, Robbie. And to your knowledge, it would be the first woman voice on the podcast, correct? Absolutely, Drew. I cannot recall a female being on the podcast ever before. So this will be a little bit groundbreaking today. All right. Well, Robbie's the uh, the first one up, and we'll have Minty up second. And Robbie's been good, 5%. Uh, college football blue chip totals, 13-6 and six last year. Uh, since last year, excuse me. So that's 68%, and that's 137 and 87 over the longer term. That's 61% since 2007. He's got one up right now at sportsmemo.com. He's actually got a bunch of plays and uh, putting up the NFL right after the podcast. So check it out at sportsmemo.com. And guys, for this podcast, we have uh, the coupon code NFL9. That's NFL and the number nine, no spaces in there needed. And you can get every play on the board for only $9. So huge discounts out there. If you're looking to buy uh, single plays here from sportsmemo.com. We got two games left, Robbie. Uh, What Oakland Green Bay looks like the Packers minus four and a half at Lambeau, 46 and a half the total, Robbie. Yeah, and Green Bay is off the same short work week <clears throat> that Detroit is. Uh, but, boy, Green Bay at, in the wide receiving core, Drew, what an injured mess they are. Uh, it, Devontae Adams is now listed as out for this game once again. Uh, we had an injury to Geronimo Allison Monday night, has not cleared concussion protocol, likely out for this game as well. And then we have Marquez Valdez-Scantling also injured and may be forced to play because they just don't have enough wide receivers. If all three of those guys don't go, which at right now I'd rate it probably 60, 40 that they can't go. Um, then your wide receivers for Aaron Rodgers and company are Jake Kumalo and Alan Lazard. Jimmy Graham is also hurt at tight end. What it means all summed up is they're probably going to lean heavily on that offensive line in the ground game here. Take a flip to the other side, and we've already seen that John Gruden has begun to lean on the ground game for the Oakland Raiders. Josh Jacobs becoming a household name uh, for the Oakland Raiders at running back, the former Alabama back, first year in the league. Two teams that are going to run the football. Um, Neither one plays especially great run defense. The Raiders a little bit better than the Packers, but I think that what you'll find here is a lot of eight-man boxes. Both of these teams are going to dare the other to throw the football. To me, it makes it real simple fundamentally. I'll probably play under. I think Green Bay would love to just run clock and get out of here with a 2016 victory, something like that. The Raiders probably come into play as a live dog here, Drew. Um, They've had the week off. They have a little bit of confidence now, three and two inside that division, three and two straight up. Um, So certainly John Gruden will bring a team that thinks they can win into this game. But for me, the, the lead play would probably be under. And I might be able to follow that up with Raiders plus points because I really do think Green Bay just wants to get out of Dodge alive. Um, It's a non-conference game, so there's no special meaning to it. And like we're saying, with only a few days or at least with one less day preparation should be tough on the Packers. Robbie, one game left here. And guys, follow him on Twitter at Rob Vino Sports. Check out his packages at Sports Memo. 
sportsmemo.com. And remember the coupon code NFL9 at checkout, sportsmemo.com. Every play on the board, just $9 with that coupon code NFL9. Unlimited use as well. We got Jacksonville at Cincinnati, Robbie. Looks like the Jags and the mustache laying four on the highway. 43 and a half the total, Robbie. Well, you got to love him too, Drew. I mean, what he's done for that team offensively. And you know what? Nick Foles is going to return to practice, and it'll be an interesting Mm. decision within the next couple of weeks which way Jacksonville is going to go at the quarterback position. Right now, I think you would have to favor Minshew, but we know that the money talks, and maybe Nick Foles regains his job based on that. But right now for this game, um, you know, I found that Jacksonville – unassumingly has become a pretty good total play because odds makers haven't really adjusted to the fact that Jacksonville can now score with this quarterback and they've been able to produce a couple of overs and I I think you might see another one here Uh, Jalen Ramsey now on the LA Rams so their shut down corner half the field taken away is now gone they've played without him the last two weeks didn't fare too bad but they're still susceptible uh, to the pass at this point in time Cincinnati might be able to make enough happen. I know they're a disaster across the offensive line. Um, Certainly without A.J. Green, they're not the same wide receiving core all season long thus far. But they'll probably be able to make enough plays here. The total sits low at 43. And to me, with Minshew at quarterback against a defense like this, which, by the way, ranks 31st in the NFL in total defense, I think he's good for 24 to 27 points the way he moves the football. So 27-17 gets you home. I think that's more than reasonable here. I would probably look at total and Jacksonville. Those would be the two recommendations in that contest. Nice, Robbie. Good stuff, as always. Uh, Before we head to the next section here, Robbie, anything else you want to throw out to the watchers before we shut this down? You know, we do this every week, Drew, but let's just um, thank all the listeners and all of you that are watching the videos now that we have them up. Um, Certainly, we want to continue that uh, in the future here and hopefully bring a lot more uh, followers to Sports Memo here video wise and podcast wise so good luck to everybody with their tickets this week hopefully what we're saying here (laughs) on this show makes you some money because that's the intent of doing this we're not just trying to take up time out of our day (laughs) but we're trying to get you to cash tickets here so hopefully that's the way it rolls this weekend yeah great stuff robbie have a uh, fun safe weekend buddy and guys we'll be right back with minty bets finish off the nfl every game on the board podcast